Hey guys, welcome back to Unreal Labs. So today is part two. We got some workstations, workstations, and more workstations. Actually, we just have two workstations, a Windows 10 and Windows 11 machine. We need to get it on the Unreal Labs.local domain. We've got some DHCP, IP Helper, I don't know, VLANs. What else do we got? We got a bunch of stuff we got to do today. If you haven't checked out video one yet, um, configure your domain controller, then uh, take a peek at that video first. And let's, uh, yeah, let's get going. Workstations. 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 All right, so let's jump into the switching configuration for this lab here. We're moving on to Unreal Corp workstations. We need to get the accounting and engineering workstation uh, on the domain. We need to join them to the domain. We need to uh, add an IP helper address configuration to the Cisco switch that'll forward broadcast in these VLANs to a unicast to DC1. Uh, we need to configure the switch ports for these two machines to be in VLAN 101 or 102. Um, so let's jump into that configuration here. Let's pop over to the Cisco switch. We did a little configuration on last video. If I can sign into it here. Yep. And then let's show uh, run interface FA1011. Actually, let's go actually one step a little deeper here. Let's show interface status include connected. Let's just see, make sure everything's, those two uh, ports are, are actually connected and live. And they are, and they're both sitting on VLAN 1 here. So let's make that configuration change on interface FA1011. So we'll be switch port mode access, and then switch port access, and we are going to use VLAN 101 uh, for this one, correct? Yes, VLAN 101. All right. And then we need to jump over to interface 12, so interface FA1012, and we need to do this exact same thing almost, except uh, we need to assign it to VLAN 102. And we can end that. And then let's show, uh, excuse me, show interface status, include connected. I just want to verify <clears throat> those are in the right ports there. And we could probably put descriptions descriptions on those if we want, but we will uh, we do that later. Um, now let's jump over to, we need to do the IP helper address configuration so let's uh, show run interface VLAN 101 and 102. Let's look what those look like right now. All right, so this is the setup where we're actually going to take the broadcasts from those machines booting up. We need to turn those broadcasts into unicasts and, and get them forwarded to DC1 so we can get, once we configure DHCP, we can actually get an address back. So let's make that configuration. So config T interface VLAN 101. So let's drop into that layer three interface. And then it's going to be IP helper. And if you tab that out, it should give you that option. But you can also question mark, you know, in the command. And then we'll question mark again. And we're going to add this IP destination address. And that a destination address is going to be uh, DC1. So what we assigned DC1 last time was 10, 10, 110. And then we will drop into interface VLAN 102, and we will do the exact same thing. All right, so let's take a peek at those now. Show run interface VLAN 101. That looks good, and we'll do two. That looks good also. And I'm just gonna save that configuration right there. And we will move on to the DHCP setup of D, uh, DC1. All right, so let's get DHCP installed. We need to install that DHCP role on DC1, and then we need to create two scopes, uh, VLAN 101 and 102 for these two VLANs. So let's jump over to our EM workstation here, and we're gonna open server manager if it's not already open. So that is under start and server manager. All right, that's loaded up, and we're going to hit Manage, and we're going to add roles and features. And we're going to hit Next, and then Role-Based and Feature-Based Installation. And we're going to make sure we have it selected uh, D 
DC1 or whatever server you've called it. And we're going to select that DHCP server role here. So that's the role we're going to add. So add features to. We're going to hit next. We don't need to add any additional. We'll hit next again. <clears throat> and then it's just giving us some things to note here. You know, we should have a static IP address assigned to this machine already. And then we should kind of have our subnet and scope plans, you know, already thought out, which we do. So we'll hit next and we will hit install. And I think we might actually have one problem with my installs. I forgot to unauthorize my scope or my DHCP server when I was testing in the lab before. So we'll see what happens here. This should go okay, but it's gonna, uh, we might have some issues in the configuration here. It's not a huge deal, um, but I just wanted to make sure you're aware of it. So when you see it doesn't complete totally correct. coffee break all right so our feature has been or our role has been uh, completed we'll hit close on this but we've got a couple more things to do here so if we go up to the flag we'll notice that uh, bang up there and we need to actually complete uh, the DHCP configuration so we'll click on that and uh, it's going to create the following security groups here, DHCP administrators and DHCP users. And then it's going to try to authorize the server. And this is where I think it's going to give me some trouble. Not a huge problem, so we'll hit next. And the use, uh, yep, user credentials administrator account, we'll hit commit on that. And yeah, here we go. So it failed. These They're already present in the directory server. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we'll hit, this should actually have said done here. On a, on a brand new install. So we'll hit close and we'll go to tools and we'll go to DHCP and it'll open up. Now normally these won't be green right off the bat. So well on, on the installation it would have been green of unauthorization. So this is already authorized. So what I'll do is I'll unauthorize this just to make sure here and we'll refresh and then, so they're now come to the little, I don't know, target sign there. Uh, so we'll reauthorize this just to make sure we we are good to go. We'll hit refresh, and yeah, we've got green check marks, so we're okay there. So um, <clears throat> that's just kind of a glitch in my lab. You might, if you do experience something like that, hopefully you can just unauthorize and reauthorize the server to to kind of kick it loose. So we need to make uh, two scopes now uh, for VLAN 101 and then VLAN 102. So let's configure those real quick. So we're gonna right click on uh, ULDC1 and we're going to, oh, excuse me, on IP version four and we'll hit new scope. We'll hit next and I'm gonna call this one, um, the first one engineering and that's VLAN 101 just for description. We'll hit next and then IP range on that is 10, 10, 101. Uh, starting address, I'm going to start at 10, and the ending address, I'm going to start at, or I'm going to end it at 254. And then you need to pay attention to your, your mask uh, length there. Our length uh, that we created on those layer 3 interfaces on the Cisco switch was a 24, so we want to make sure we match that, so that's a 24, so 255, 255, 255. We'll hit next. I'm not going to add any exclusion, but you can definitely, actually we'll add an exclusion on 102, um, so we'll just go through that on 102. We'll hit next, and we'll hit four on that. Now you can keep it at eight days, especially for a small business network. Eight days should be, you know, totally fine. But um, you know, I kind of try to keep mine at four to five, and we'll hit next on that. And then we'll configure. We need to configure some options like uh, DNS server and and default gateway. So we'll hit next, and we need the router. Like I said, default gateway. So that is going to be 10.10.101.1. 10, so that's the layer three interface on the Cisco switch. And we'll hit add. Hit next. And then your parent uh, domain is Unreal Labs local, and that's the correct IP. So we'll hit next on that. If you need a Win server, or if you uh, you need Win's functionality or NetBIOS functionality, you could add that here um, and put the IP if you wanted, or just resolve the name of the the server or the host and we'll hit next and then yes we want to activate the scope now and we'll
before hit finish. And so that scope should be active and, and ready to go. So now let's do another scope, and this one is going to be accounting. This is VLAN 102. And so the starting IP here will be 102.10. Uh, we'll do the same thing, 102.254. We want to watch that subnet link there, so we want 24. And exclusions, uh, yeah, let's add 10, 10, uh, 102. Let's exclude, um, uh, let's exclude 240, 10, 10, uh, 102, 254. So let's exclude like the top of the, of the scope. So we'll exclude, um, yeah. We'll hit next and then on days I'm going to do five. Then we'll hit next again, and we're going to want to configure options for this also. So default gateway is going to be 102.1, and that's the Layer 3 VLAN 102's uh, Layer 3 interface there on that switch. And we'll hit next, and then these settings for DNS should be the same, and we'll verify those. We'll hit next again. And we won't do wins again. We don't need wins, so we'll hit next, and then we'll say, yes, I want to have those options Good to go there. All right. So you're in good shape. And we've got some kind of information here on that scope, but that's right. We'll just we'll talk about that here in a second. That's because of my exclusions that I've added. So we'll hit next on that. Or we'll just I just want to explore my options here. Just want to make sure all my Settings are correct. We've got no reservations. We'll go through reservations here um, at the end of the video. All right, so that pretty much sums up, you know, a basic DHCP install. Um, we will go through some options, some the overview of this uh, at the end of the video, and I'll have it marked on the channel time uh, or the video time down below. So let's, uh, let's move on to joining uh, Workstation 1 and Workstation 2 right here to the domain. All right, so now we're into configuring desktop. So we need to actually join um, Workstation 1 and Workstation 2 to the domain, but we wanted to get IP connectivity with DHCP first going. So we, the last uh, part of the video, we finished up DHCP. Uh, so let's we're going to boot these two machines, verify they have an IP address. We're going to join them to the domain, and then we'll log them in um, <clears throat> with their account names here, and then change the password. So let's just move over here. I also wanted to kind of uh, talk about that that blue bang there. That was because of my exclusions on here. I just refreshed the scope, and that that went away. Somehow it thought I was overwriting IPs or something, or it didn't have IPs to give out. So I just wanted to talk about that for a second. Um, and then also it did, just to show you guys, uh, when we were doing the install, we have the DHCP administrators group and the DHCP users group, that security groups that were made. Um, but let's jump over to, and let's get uh, Workstation 1 booted and Workstation 2 booted. And I just want to actually, I'm going to hang up, I'm going to hang on this server here real quick. And we should be able to kind of watch the IP addresses come in here or see the leases. Yeah, there's uh, so this is actually the NIC on my VMware workstation machine. So that's one, which is good. Refresh this. Yeah, we should have another one on this one too. So it's, it's taken 10. The next address we should see is 11 once these guys have booted up here. I am hoping. Log just the, uh, the local user in here. All right, so the local user is, is logging in, and I'm going to just go back over to the 2012 server, or the 2022 server, excuse me. And we should see, yeah, so there's 11 uh, for Workstation 1, which is what good sign. And we should have 11 here for Workstation 2. So that, that looks like we are 
having DHCP function. So let's uh, let's finish these workstations up. So we'll just start with workstation one. So this is a Windows 11 host or you know machine. Um, I'm gonna just right click on uh, or left click on that folder. I'm gonna right click on this PC and I'm going to go to properties. And if your device name isn't something you'd want, you'd want to change that first. I know you can, if we click this domain uh, or workstation, you can actually, I think, change uh, the workstation name at the same time you join the domain, but I prefer to do a restart before I do that, just, just from, I don't know, older days. But uh, let's uh, type in our domain here. So just to back up for a second, you should see this domain and or workstation, or workgroup, I mean. And then we'll hit next, or change, and then we'll go to domain unreallabs.local we'll hit OK and then we will give it oh come on if I can type the administrator account of the domain alright so we're welcome to the unreallabs.local domain we'll hit OK on that OK on this and it should ask us to restart. All right, yep, restart, please. All right, so it's finished restarting. So we're still back at this local user account. So what we wanna do is actually click other user and we'll wanna use uh, and excuse me, if we're logging in as the administrator, we'll want to use Unreal Labs or the domain name and then administrator. If we just type in administrator, just a tip here, it's going to try to log you into um, the local machine. Um, so we need to uh, qualify that, that login here. So um, I'm actually going to log in as, let's go back to our sheet here. So uh, John Baker here. Or no, is that, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, John Baker. So that's where we need to be. Oh, that's the user account we're going to use. So like I said, other user, and then it's J Baker or whatever your user account you created. The password we originally assigned, and that was on the last video there. Oh, did I change it? I must have changed it. I did. I wanted to show you guys the, uh, we'll see that hopefully in the next one here. All right, so John Baker is now on the domain, or the workstation one is on the domain. John Baker user account is logging in. I'm just going to UNC path myself to DC1 here. I just want to sh see if uh, we can see the sysfall and net login. Yep, net logon's going. It looks good. Since fall, well, we're able to access those folders. So his profile has been completed and uh, he's on the domain. So we can, uh, I'm going to do a run and I just want to test some IT connectivity here. Not that I'm worried about it. Let's ping the server, which we were already there. So we know that works. All right, great. So let's switch over to Workstation 2. And this is a Windows 10 machine, so it's pretty similar to Windows 11 in a sense of how you join it. I'm going to just, like I said, click on File Explorer there, right-click on this PC. I'm going to go to Properties. It's going to bring up the About window, and we should be able to verify our device name here. So if that's something that you don't want, you want to change that first. Uh, we'll then click Advanced System Settings. I'm going to go to Computer Name, and I'm going to hit Change here. And then I'm going to select Domain, and I'm going to type in Unreal Labs, or whatever your domain is. I'm going to fully qualify this. If I can type, I'm having such a hard time today. And that was pretty quick, so welcome to the Unreal Lip domain. We'll hit OK. 
and then it should ask us to restart again. And then we'll log in with Cindy Williams. Our user account. All right, Workstation 2 is back up. So like I said, we're gonna click other user and then we'll do Cindy Williams and we'll put her password and we use the other video. And this is what we should have seen. I like it. I must have reset the password. Uh, so we, the user needs to change on first login. So we'll hit okay. And then I'll choose another password. So this would be like a typical user. You'd wanna make sure you're handing them a password that they could choose their own <clears throat> when they logged in. And just an FYI, I'm sure you guys know this, but uh, Cindy Williams can log into Workstation 1 or Workstation 2, and same thing with John Baker. He can actually use either one of these workstations and, and log in with that. Just to, if you were wondering, just wanted to answer the question. And then we'll just uh, browse out to the DC. Not that you have to do this step, but uh, I do like to see the net logon and, and sysvol uh, are available. Or if you had a file server you wanted to, to browse out to, you should be able to access the shares. So that finishes up uh, those two workstations. Let's check back with our lab here. So we verified that uh, we had IPs coming onto VLAN 101 and 102. Um, I haven't done, let's do the John Baker local admin. We can do him that, to finish that out really quick. Um, yeah, let's, let's go there. So let's move over to John Baker. And what we're gonna wanna do is just do a quick sign out here or we could switch user. And I'll log in as administrator. And I'm going to click on Files Explorer again. And this is Windows 11. It's a little different on Windows 10. We'll right click on this. It's going to have, we're going to have to click this Show uh, More Options, and then we're going to go to Manage. And then in computer management, we're gonna look for local users and groups. We're gonna click on the groups box there, and then we're gonna go administrators. And we can see John Baker's already been added, but let's remove him real quick, just so we can walk through this. And looks like Cindy Williams has been added also. Remove her. And that would have happened to default. I was already running through this lab, FYI. So let's just walk through this. So you wouldn't have had to remove anything, but we want to add, and then we're going to say John Baker. And from this location here is where we're choosing. So let's add Cindy Williams too. Let's say there was another domain. We'd want to click locations. And this is just going to have the local uh, user database here. We're going to, we can either look at the local users or the domain users. So if you do click that location, uh, so we'll type in Cindy Williams. We are looking at Unreal Labs. And we've added both of them. Not that we needed to, but we can. We'll hit OK on that. And we'll sign out of administrator. And then if John Baker was not already an administrator, uh, we would need he would need to sign out and sign back in um, for, for those settings to take for his administrator privileges to set. All right. Well, let's move on. I wanted to finish this video off with a little bit of DHCP options and then some DNS settings uh, just to cover here. Um, so I want to convert one of these addresses. Let's do uh, workstation one here. Let me refresh these to get these IPs back in here. So I want to actually just make workstation one uh, and have it as a as a reservation. So workstation one, every time it boots up in VLAN 101, it's going to get 10.10.101.11. What we can do is just simply right click that and we can add it to reservation if, as long as it's already been in there. Now, if you need to add one that isn't in there yet, uh, say you're pre-staging a machine, 
uh, we could hit new reservation and we can type the reservation name, say blah, and we can give it, uh, let's say IP 100. That's the IP it'll get. All we need is that host's MAC address, and then we could add that in there. So we can do it either manually uh, before the host connects or once it's already connected and we're happy with that IP address it has, uh, we can right click and, and hit add, re add a reservation. <clears throat> now if that, if Workstation ONE travels over to VLAN 102 or a different VLAN, that reservation would fall under here. And if there's no reservation set, it's just gonna pull whatever IP is available uh, in that scope, what, whatever the next one would be. Um, I did wanna kind of show you some server options too. There's quite a few uh, server options that you can do for, for global for all the scopes on the server. Uh, did I lose it? Oh, there we go. Um, so there's quite a few options there. And then there's also, if you want to tailor it down to that scope, you can right click and configure options in here. And that would only configure for this scope. All right, I just want to open up DNS here and I just want to make a couple little adjustments. I would like to add a reverse lookup zone to our network. Um, you know, you necessarily don't have to do this. Um, but a reverse DNS uh, zone can help map IP addresses back to domain names. And it also kind of, it'll also cl um, clean up like an NS lookup that will return like no name. And I will show you that um, on Workstation 1 and 2. So we jump over to Workstation 1 and we will run man prompt and we'll do an NS lookup here if I can type, like I said, my typing today is terrible. And it'll return this like timeout here. So two seconds, default servers unknown. So to fix that error, which I see quite a bit in small business networks uh, or even medium sized networks for that matter, um, where possible servers are or other workstations where we want to, to like I said, reverse map the IP to uh, to a host name, we can do that in DNS under reverse lookup zones. So we'll right click on a new zone. We'll hit next. I'm going to make a primary zone. And I'm taking pretty much all default options. So what I, the first network I'm going to make or lookup zone I'm going to make is 10, 100. So the server VLAN and I'm going to hit next, next. And actually I'm going to, I'm going to allow both, uh, you know, non secure and secure updates to this. And I'm going to hit finish. And I'm going to look in here. And I'm just going to cheat a tad. I'm going to add a porn record in this. And I'm going to pick the DC here. And workstation two, let's see what it shows right now. It might actually be fixed now. Yeah, it is. So it does the reverse lookup of this IP, this address, and it comes back through that reverse lookup zone as this host name, um, which is nice to know, um, especially if you have multiple sites and, you know, depending on what DC you're using or what DNS server you're using for, for your NS lookup. And so now if we kind of look up, you know, Workstation 1, it'll come back nice and clean. And you can make reverse lookup zones um for any of your subnets so i will just make another one we'll run through one more here so let's right click on reverse lookup zone we'll hit next i'm going to make a primary zone we're going to choose all, to all dns servers running on domain controllers in the domain of unreallabs.local and there's a couple options like you could do it to the whole forest of all the dns servers like in multiple domains but we'll just choose the middle one that's fine and IP version 4, yep. And then we'll type in the network address. So let's say 101. We don't need that last octet. And we'll hit next. And I'm going to allow both. And we'll hit finish. And we'll we'll finish it out. Why not do the last one here? So we'll, it'll be a little faster here. But I still want you guys to see the options. So that would be 10, 10, 102. Whoops. I want to make sure it's right. 10, 10, 102. And we'll allow 
not secured and secured, and we'll hit finish. And that'll that'll create our, our reverse lookup zones. So now when our hosts actually come up in these, we sh this should be filled out uh, in your network, so you'd, you'd be able to you would see more of these pointer records being being created uh, from your host. And, and your DNS looks all clean. So let's just exit this and on Workstation 1 and just refresh this real quick. And we are looking good there. Um, I do want to show you how to change by default um, on your forward lookup zone. Your updating, your dynamic updates are going to be secure only. And I think that's 2016. I could be wrong. Yes, maybe it's 2012 or 2. I can't remember. There's so many servers. Uh, but this is where you would change that. So let's just say you wanted non-secure and secure, um, you know, that it would create, you know, any host that would re could register. Um, like I said, that's not recommended. Um, but I just wanted to show you where that would be. Uh, we'll get in some other videos. We'll get into a big topic, especially when we add our other DC in this lab. We're going to be, um, we scroll up here, when we add the remote D, uh, DC1. So we'll be having some more DNS fun when that happens. But I really appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, if you have some questions or comments or you want to see something in more detail, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to to, to make a video on it. I'm going to continue this series for the next couple of weeks, I think. So I uh, appreciate everybody that's viewed uh, part one and now uh, part two. Um, I kind of consider the workstation, VM workstation part one, but uh, so be it. Anyways, thanks again. appreciate it. Have a great day.